Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my God, this is going to be another ridiculously long video. Oh. Ow! Don't burn your hand though. Okay. Good evening, everybody. So I am in another kitchen yet again. And this kitchen is a special kitchen because it's uh, my home kitchen, I guess you'd say. It's the kitchen in our auberge. It's the old industrial kitchen from the restaurant that is no longer open that we've claimed to be our own. So I'll show you guys a little bit around the kitchen. Actually, let me do that now. Let me show you the kitchen now. So this is it. You got the dishwasher. There we go. Very nice. Uh, all right, so um, a guy that used to work here was an artist and he painted these on the wall. So let's see if you guys can guess what they are. If you do, drop them in the comments below. But there's little planet thing number one, little planet thing number two, little planet thing number three. All right, and uh, right here are my spices. Yeah. Very nice, right? Oh yeah. And then we have the fridge, which is very cool. But it's just nice to have a big ass fridge like this. Woo! It's a little messy right now because I just got back here. So I'm kind of organizing things still, but we just arrived last night. Let me put this here. Boop. And it is uh, winter now, so it's low season, so it's very quiet. And uh, I'm going to cook dinner tonight for the staff because I often do when I'm here. It's my love language and it's how I show my appreciation and love and support for all their hard work. And yeah, we do a lot of communal meals here. Uh, once a week, the staff does a whole communal meal together. But when we're here and it's crazy busy and in the summer we do a lot of communal meals together and there's always something to celebrate. Uh, I love cooking for everybody. Uh, it's just really fun, you know, to make a big meal and share it along a long table with everybody. And you know, after a hard day's work, everyone comes together and just enjoys food. So anyways, but uh, tonight's gonna be a quick meal because I'm a little tired and I still have a lot of stuff to do like unpacking and organizing and things like that. But uh, the staff uh, are doing a karaoke night. So I'm gonna be cooking for some Mexicans, some Ecuadorians, some Brazilians. It's always a nice mix. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fiesta. And they're all, you know, young spring chickens. So uh, they eat a lot of food. And when I make a meal quickly for them, I have to think high volume and cheap too, because man, food is so expensive in Canada now. It's crazy, especially coming back from Thailand. Anyways, and it's like karaoke night, so we're gonna make it kind of fun and cozy, and uh, we don't have a grocery store nearby, and it's late, so I had to just run across the street to the little corner store, which has a few good things, and pick up what I can to make a delicious meal. But tonight's gonna be junk food night, so yeah. I brought them back. Uh, a huge bag of the spiciest snacks that I could find from Thailand because they love their spicy chips. So uh, we're gonna be eating that. And I'm going to be making buffalo blue cheese mac and cheese, all right? So at the grocery, at the little corner store, they didn't have a big thing of Frank's Red Hot. They only had the little ones. So I had to buy like five of them. <laughs> And we got Chez. Let's move my camera back a little more. My head's cut off. Uh, macaroni. We're going to put some jalapeno, uh, pickled jalapeno in there. A little bit of ground turkey. And some blue cheese. 
and make it as spicy as uh, we can because uh, the Mexicans love the spice. But for Gab um, and myself, although I'll probably still have some macaroni, I'm gonna cook some spaghetti squash because Gab loves spaghetti squash and uh, trying to uh, cut calories for him a little bit. So we're gonna be making the squash for ourselves and we're gonna be feeding the young, uh, the young ones the, the mac, the macaroni. And I also picked these up from the congelé section. But we're gonna be making some of these. Ooh, you can't really see. Is the light gonna go up? Jalapeno poppers. I mean, I would have made these from scratch, but I don't have any jalapenos right now. And um, yeah, they're gonna be satisfied with them anyways. The point is we're going to share a nice meal together and sing some karaoke. All right, let's get started. This recipe, again, just made up uh, from my head. I've made buffalo mac and cheese with stuffed blue cheese meatballs before, which was so good. That was so many years ago. I haven't made that in forever. But uh, we're gonna improvise and put everything together and see how it goes. So I have ground turkey here and I'm gonna cook the ground turkey, just uh, maybe with some salt and pepper in the pan. I already got the water boiling for the macaroni. So this shouldn't take long. Again, guys, I improvise everything. So if you like a recipe and you wanna know what it is, let me know if I should actually start taking the time and writing these recipes out in my description. Because again, oftentimes it's just kind of spur of the moment what inspires me. So yeah. All right, let's turn this on. Also cooking with a gas stove is so incredible. Okay, I'm gonna grab some agua and the other turkey and we're gonna start cooking it. Always hydrate. So yeah. Um, okay, so we got the fire going. Let's uh, pop this baby open. Oh, and put that ground turkey in. Ooh. Oh yeah, my God. Gas stove heats up so quickly. Did I pierce a hole in this? No, yes, I don't know. Let's pierce another hole, shall we? Ooh, there we go. I love ground turkey. It's such a lean protein. I think it's the bird or the meat, the ground meat with the highest amount of protein that's the leanest, which is pretty awesome. Ah. Oh my God, the paper. It's still stuck to the frozen one. All right, I got it off. Let's go wash our hands. Let's get some salt and pepper. So on the pepper scale, I can't remember what that pepper scale, scale is called. What's it called? The pepper scale. No, wait, what's it called? Scoville scale. All right. Uh, that's where they rank all the peppers from hottest to mildest. Let's just put some random salt and pepper there. And the Mexicans love it spicy, all right. The more the spice, the better. Um, so that's why I'm making it spicy tonight. But I mean, Frank's is not that spicy, let's be honest. It's like drinking water for them. Uh, where does Frank's fall on Scoville? It's 450 on the Scoville scale, which makes it milder than the others, yes. But we're gonna add some jalapenos. But the Mexicans, I, I don't know why I was calling them the, Me the Mexicans. It's just that that's what we call them. Actually, the first, a few years ago, <laughs> um, we used to have a bunch of other, uh, I guess, cultures or countries that were here, like more Europeans or whatnot. But then slowly, I don't know, the Mexicans just took over one summer and they were labeled as the Mexican mafia, which was uh, quite funny. I remember this Russian guy, um, this 18 year old guy from Russia came here to work for the summer and he found himself living in a dorm of 10 Mexican girls. It was hilarious, but he was so sweet and he ended up becoming like, the boyfriend of one of the girls and 
anyways, it was a very special story. But yeah, anyways, so they have this um, hot sauce called, well, it's chili arbol. Yeah, I'll show it to you after I see it over there. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. It's with chili arbol and like peanuts and sesame seeds, it's so good. And our manager here, her mom makes it from scratch. Hold on, let me check this meat. All right. Yeah, all right. That water is gonna take forever to boil anyways. So yeah, her mom makes it from scratch. It is so good, but so spicy. So you only have to put a little bit, but I'm sure they're gonna douse all of this in that sauce. Let me show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Chili arbol. See, you see the peanuts in there? Oh yeah. Whew, that's good. I mean, come on. Oh yeah, look at that. It has kind of a smoky flavor, but it's freaking spicy. Very, very spicy. So best be sure to only put a little bit on whatever it is that you're putting on, depending on what your tolerance is for spicy things. All right, so we're cooking the meat. I had one that was defrosted. This is frozen still. I was kind of lazy and didn't take out the meat um, beforehand because I actually wasn't sure what I was going to be cooking. So yeah. Okay, so after we cook the meat, we are going to do the roux, which is what you do with mac and cheese. You make a roux with like butter and milk and flour and everything. Although I never really understood the roux that much because I feel like you, I guess, I guess cause you're making like a creamy liquidy texture, but you can also just boil pasta and throw in a shit ton of cheese. And there you go, mac and cheese. But no, you, you need the roux. You need the roux, it's important apparently. So I just, I do what I'm told sometimes, but sometimes I don't do roux and I just put cheese in. And it's honestly delicious, depending what kind of macaroni and cheese I'm making. Um, but yeah, you could put anything, 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 anything. All right, this meat is cooking. Okay, while this meat is, uh, hold on. Maybe it's gonna be like, I don't know, another 10 minutes. Okay, we're gonna prepare the squash, the uh, spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash, such a great alternative for pasta. It's delicious and so easy to make. There it is. Ooh. So usually I roast spaghetti squash. I chop it in half. I put some olive oil and some spices and I put it in the oven for like 45 minutes or something. But we're gonna do it the quick way, which is in the microwave. Ugh. You know what? I'm, so I'm not a super safe knife cutter. And one day, hopefully not on camera, I will actually cut my hand off. Um, so I'm gonna get Gab to cut the squash because he's very skilled at that. All right, if he's available. All right, let's see if he's working or not. Oh, hi. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Do you have two seconds? Can you cut a squash for me? Yes. Thanks. It's the best. That's my job. He's the best. Thank you. That is your job. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, what? <laughs> Don't cut your hand off. I'm making macaroni for the teenagers and squash for you. <laughs> Okay. I have a very specific diet. <laughs> you have oh. to... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for cooking. That's great. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, squash is cut and you will see, actually, I'm gonna bring the uh, camera over here. Although, so how are you digging this like vlog kind of cooking vibe? Do you guys prefer full on like edited jump cuts, beautifully aesthetically designed videos of food? I mean, I know I like to watch that kind of stuff, but um, at the same time, like, let's keep it real, man. Let's, let's show people what it really is like to cook in the kitchen, because sometimes it's not all pretty. Sometimes we don't always watch our vegetables. Sometimes we just like rip bags open like four-year-olds. Sometimes we take a lot of shortcuts, you know? All right, so the meat is almost ready, except for this part. We're almost there. Okay, so, all right. So you can see the squash kind of looks like this inside. Okay, we're gonna remove the uh, seeds. Let's get a bowl so we can take that out. So, just gonna kind of scoopy scoop seeds, put it in the bowl. Ugh, gross. See, and it's kind of like stringy texture because when we scrape it with a fork, you're gonna see that it's gonna be like spaghetti. All right, so we're gonna take the squash and we're gonna put it in the microwave on a plate for, I don't know, five minutes, okay? And they stole my microwave here, so I'm gonna go in the communal kitchen to use the microwave. So I'll bring you guys with me, hold on. So the communal kitchen is the kitchen for clients to use. Okay, let's get a plate. Let's put some salt and pepper. All right, see? So we're gonna put this in the microwave and uh, we're gonna put it for five minutes. I mean, you have to kind of put it for a few minutes, stop, and then check it out again, and then stop, and sort of judge um, what consistency you want. And I'm not gonna bring you with me because there might be clients there and then they're gonna look at me weird and ask me questions, so I'll be right back. Bonsoir. Hey, bonsoir. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, there's just one girl cooking there. Sometimes they stop you and they ask you for things and so on. Hello! Hello! You good? Yeah, I'm telling what's up and I answer and I say, I'm not there, I'm not there. All right. Okay, uh, that meat is uh, almost done. I know I play with my hair a lot, guys. Um, I should probably tie it up for sanitary reasons, but whatever. I'm at home and I like it down. Okay, so now we are going to make the roux, but first I'm gonna see how long do these take to cook? 13 to 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll do those at the end as like a little side. Ugh. Okay, let's grab a pot for the roux. We'll get like a medium size-ish pot because we wanna make a lot of roux. All right, we want a good amount of chez. Right, everyone likes a good amount of chiz. So let's, there's the meat. Let's see, there's still like a little bit of pink left. Okay, and the water is clearly boiling for the pasta. So let's put that in. All right, so we're gonna have macaroni. I guess we will make a lot of macaroni because we're a lot of people. And it will give them leftovers. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I always un overestimate the amount of pasta that I need. So I always make way more than what I need. And sometimes I save it and I can kind of recycle it and reuse it with something else after, but then other times it just sits in the fridge and gets sad. But I'm feeding like 10 people tonight, so it should be enough. And if there's leftovers, then great. I love it when they have leftovers so they can feed themselves tomorrow. All right, this meat is pretty much all brown 
And we're gonna start the roux. Okay, I always have to Google how to make roux all the time. Anyways, I did it before. They said two tablespoons of butter, but we'll probably put four, we'll double the recipe. And then that means four tablespoons of flour and then a cup and a half of milk. And then you gotta like whisk, whisk, whisk. And then you take it off the burner and then you put all your cheese in and you whisk, whisk, whisk. And then it just becomes this incredible cheesy like cheese for mac and cheese, whatever you want to call it. And I think I will also uh, pour some Franks in the actual roux. And then I will put more Franks on the macaroni itself after. And then I got blue cheese, but I'm going to like break that up into chunks in the macaroni. And do I have any greens? I have some spinach left. Uh, do I have, if I had broccoli, I should have brought broccoli, damn it. I would have chopped up broccoli in there. Broccoli would have been good. I really like to put a green in the mac and cheese, like kale or broccoli. Uh, green onions would have been great, but I don't have any green onions. Um, I have some spinach, but let's see if there's anything else in the fridge that we can potentially use as a green. Uh, just that. Anything in there? Cauliflower could be good too. No, not really. I have some celery, um, which I'll probably cut up and kind of serve on the side uh, for, for Gab, because he loves celery. I'm not really a big celery eater. And buffalo and celery just go so freaking good together. I also should have thought twice before pouring that whole thing of macaroni in here because this pot of pasta is gonna be super heavy for me to strain. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Mm, I love ground turkey. Okay, root time. This is not exactly what I had in mind. I wanted like a shorter pot, but this'll do. I guess we'll see. Okay, and we're just gonna eyeball things, okay? Because that's what we do here, is we eyeball, eyeball. Let's turn this on. Okay, where's my whisk? We got the whisk. Butter, so where's the, they say two tablespoons, I guess like, Half a cup, is that too much? Whatever, we're doing it anyways. Okay, butter. Let's not make it too hot. And then let's pour some flour in there. I don't know. Okay, and let's whiskey whisk. Oh, I probably should have waited till the butter um, melted a little bit more. Let me show you guys. I'm such a messy cook, guys. Such a messy cook. Macaroni is ready. Oh my God. This is why cooking in a messy way, not always smart. I'm gonna turn off the roux for two seconds. Oh my God, this is so bad, guys, I'm sorry. I'm gonna turn off that roux and I'm going to strain the pasta. All right, let's see if I can lift this. Ugh. This is what I've been working for. Okay, let's, oh shit. I left the oven on. I'm just gonna leave that like that. Okay, so they say when it gets brown, start putting the milk in. That's like two cups, I think. Oh, they say that you should whisk until you have no chunks left and not to let it boil. Oh my God, this lighting is so terrible. And I look like a wreck right now. Well, it's here. Um, if it's not enough, you can always add more butter and more milk. 
like once you add all the macaroni in and just like free pour that shit until you get the consistency that you kind of want. Because sometimes it's just not creamy enough and you want it to be creamier, you know? All right, I just added a little bit more butter in there. It's okay if you don't do the roux exactly how they tell you to do the roux. It's still gonna taste delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the heat and now I'm going to pour the cheese in. This is the best part. I love melted cheese. Actually, you know what? Let's just like start pouring some Franks in there, you know? Okay, so what do we have here? We have triple cheddar. Let's pour it in. I'm just gonna, yep, free pour, free pour, free pour. Cause we want it extra cheesy, you know? Let me show you guys. I feel like this is good ASMR for cheese lovers. And then we got old cheese. OMG friends. All right, it's time for the taste test. Ooh, I gotta work on that zoom. Okay. So let's get like a jalapeno and a piece of meat, maybe a piece of blue cheese, although I can't see it anywhere. Here we go. Mm. Damn, that's good, but you know what it's missing? A little bit more Franks. Oh yeah. Do you guys hear that? I'm trying to get the microphone close. Mmm. Okay, next is a spaghetti squash time. 
Okay, so these are pretty much ready. See how it's a bit more, you can kind of, ow, it's hot, like bend it. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with the squash, I'm gonna scrape it into a big bowl. And then I think I will mix it with some of the Franks, some salt and pepper, um, maybe a little bit of roux. I'll make a roux specifically for this, but then I'm gonna cover it with cheese and put it in the oven. Okay, this is gonna be like uh, the good stuff. Okay, so let's see how quickly we can do this. Okay. Oh yeah, you see that scrape? Look at that. Ay, 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 it's hot though. Whew, don't burn your hand off. Just, all you gotta do is scrape. And it comes out like, I mean, you guys can't, like spaghetti strands, you see? Spaghetti! So I guess this video is like uh, showing you both ways how to do a super delicious, cozy, junky, fatty mac and cheese with all the good stuff and then like a healthier option if you want to avoid the carbs. Ow! Don't burn your hand though. Okay. There's something really satisfying about scraping spaghetti squash. So FYI, uh, the first time I put it in the microwave was for five minutes and then the second time was three minutes. So eight minutes total, but it depends on the size of your squash. These were like mini squashes, but the really big ones, you're definitely gonna need double time for that. Okay, so I scraped most of this one. So we're just gonna leave that here because it doesn't matter if it gets cold because I'll put it in the oven to uh, broil for a bit once uh, the roux is ready for this. I'm just taking out some of the extra seeds. Poppets. Jalapeno poppers, which I've made homemade before, which are freaking delicious. But these are frozen, store-bought, easy peasy. Okay, so they are ready, but we're gonna let them cool because they are a little hot. Oh my God, guys, they need a massage. Ah, arm day. Whew. So I just r remembered that I wanted to use the shells to put the squash in after, to put it in the oven, and I destroyed the, uh, well, half of the first one. So this will not be a shell. Oh well. So what I'm gonna do, actually, while the other one is cooling down, I'll show you guys what it is that I'm doing. Ooh. Can you guys see everything there? Yeah. Okay. So we have this delicious cheese. Mmm. Mmm, let's lick it. Mmm, mmm. Fuck, that's good. Mmm, mmm. There's some like good cheese, some little cracks there. Anyways. This is spinach, by the way. I'm gonna put spinach in ours. The meat. Oh my God. This is going to be another ridiculously long video. Okay, so um, I'm getting tired and there's one more squash to grate, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna save that for later because honestly, this is for me and Gab and it's, it's a lot of food. It makes a lot, big quantities. So I'm only gonna bake two shells. Okay, let's taste it though, shall we? 
Oh, I didn't put the jalapenos in. Or whatever, I'll do that after. Mmm! All right. Definitely needs more kick. Woo! Spicy. <coughs> I always say there are two kinds of people in this world, people who like blue cheese and people who don't like blue cheese. I am definitely of the liking blue cheese group. I don't know if Gabs likes blue cheese, but we'll see. He usually likes everything that I make anyways. Do you guys like blue cheese? Queso. Okay. B? Te gusta? It's strong. When I was a kid, that's why you I just put a little. That people were eating that. I was like, you guys are so weird to eat that. <laughs> but then later in life, you taste it, and at some point, you're like, ah, that's pretty good. <laughs> but it's. Oh, uh, I need some wine. Yeah. yeah, that goes good with wine. Woo! Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Are we recording here? Yeah, okay, so it's time uh, to eat soon. We're all very hungry. <laughs> you like what? Oh, I put a lot. Red hot. Add ball. I know. We have so many. I'm so happy. Uh, we can't live without it. Do you have to show off? What do you mean? Real comes today. You managed Real? You did? That's why. Yeah. That's French, oh my right? god, Pamela! That's Civic War 103. I, like. I, the no, first the time I just, he comes, he comes, he gives, yeah. and yeah. we, <laughs> yeah. we shared some words, and then we went to the, um, the garage. Yeah. Oh, Atelier? Yeah. Uh, well, that's when I was like doubting about what he was saying, and I called Ali. Yeah, everything was good. Wow. Oh my God. The first time I got him on the phone, I I gave him to. I said, I don't know. This man's yelling at me. I don't know what to say. Gracias. Oui. Uh, wow, that looks very nice.